everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. I had the Lord say that to me years and years and years ago, preaching in the Texas Panhandle, a little town called Hereford, Texas. Well, it's not all that small, but it's actually where the Hereford cattle that were bred in England, they called it Hereford. <clears throat> and the town was named after it because of the rancher there <laughs> that accepted that cattle and it became a, pre a predominant breed of cattle in the state of Texas. Anyway, I was there and um, I was preaching there. I had all my outlines laid out <clears throat> just like this one that I use now. And I had the, the, the subject in blue and the scriptures in red. I had them all laid out on the, on the bed. And I was preaching the fundamentals, salvation, baptism of the Holy Ghost, healing, so forth. And the, the word of the Lord came to me. He said, is there victory in salvation? I said, yeah. First Corinthians 15 chapter, we have victory over the grave, victory over death. He said, is there victory in the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Well, certainly is. That, that, that's, the op that's the open door to the supernatural. Is there victory in the healing message? I said, yes. He said, every believer has a voice and it is the voice of victory. And he said, now, you go to victory. He said, <clears throat> well, we wound up with Victory Magazine and, and then we wound up with the Victory Channel and that's the reason why. <clears throat> so, Let's look at this in the, and we were in um, Mark chapter five. Let's go to the 11th chapter, then we'll go back over there. <clears throat> I wanna read, read this, from a, the, the classic Amplified. I'll go there. And the 11th, Jesus went into Jerusalem and entered into the temple. And when he had looked around surveying and uh, everything as it was already late, he went out to Beth, Bethany together with the 12 apostles. On the day following, when he'd come from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree covered with leaves, he went to see if he could find any fruit on it. For in the fig tree, the fruit appears at the same time as the leaves. But when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the fig season had not yet come. Well, now let's read it here. Afar off having leaves, Jesus answered and said unto it, he answered that tree. You need to do the same thing. You need to talk to the disease. You need to talk to the pain. I use this, just, I use it daily. Jesus answered and said unto it, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. He said that with a loud voice. He's turned around and left. They came to Jerusalem. Jesus went into the temple. and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple and he taught, this was what was going on, he was teaching. But they had, they had something going on there, oh man. If you bought your, brought your lamb in for a sacrifice, it wouldn't be good, no, they'd find a blemish on it. Take it in the back room, and get another one, bring it up. Now you can have this one. Then they'd sell yours to someone else. Jesus knew that. And so, I mean, he wrecked the place in order to be able to teach. And so 
And the scribes and chief priests heard and saw how they might destroy him. They feared him because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. When evening was come, he went out of the city and in the morning. Now that's 12 hours. In the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. All he said was, no man eat fruit of you again forever. That fig tree could have stood there and stood there and stood there and stood there with leaves on it every year, every year, every year with no fruit. But no, his words were more powerful than that. It went into the root system of that tree and killed it. So you and I must come to the place where we find the root cause and how the devil got into our affairs. Amen. By questioning the word and search it until you can find it. My father in the faith, Oral Roberts, said it like this. He said, Kenneth, anytime, anytime, for instance, that your finances begin to dry up, he said, find, find the key issue or the root cause. He said, most of the time, it's because you've stepped out of love. Most of the time. But he said, if you'll continue to pray in the spirit and listen to the Lord, he will show it to you and he'll show it to you in, your word, in, the, in his word and when he does, fix it. And, and he said, that, that'll stop that key issue and you can just wipe the devil out of, out of your finances. He called it a key issue, but it's, it's the root of the problem. And he's right, most of the time you snap off something, get irritated at somebody and turn around and walk off when you're supposed to be walking in love. So, look at this. And Peter calling to remember saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. The cross reference says, have the God, ha have the faith of God. Well, it's by faith you, it's by faith that I ask Jesus to come into my heart. I believe that. I said, well, it sounds just as dumb as it did the first time, but I'm gonna do it. I didn't realize what I was doing scripturally, but I did it and it worked. <laughs> but now, whosoever shall say, under this mountain, be thou removed <clears throat> and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says will come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he said. Now, Brother Hagin was healed right here on these verses. He was born very premature uh, and to save his mother. Anyway, I won't go into all that. But the Lord told him one time, he said, did you notice that the, the word say in some form is mentioned three times in believing only once? So he went back and read it. Well, yeah, it did. He said, my, my people are not missing it in the believing part, they're missing it in the saying part. Well, what difference does it make what I say? It made a lot of difference to that tree, it killed it. <laughs> Amen? So, and I've heard this, well, I just can't support the word of faith anymore because I don't see it makes any difference what I say. Well, it does. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Go back and read the whole book of Hosea and you find out why. They rejected the knowledge and the priests weren't preaching it. And what they did, they rejected it. Well, that was a rejection of what Jesus said. So anyway, look at this. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, 
believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses. He can't, he can't get to you. So now then, let's go back over here to the fifth chapter once more. We started talking about that yesterday. And, uh, <clears throat> and we talked about corresponding action before faith. But now, let's go ahead and, and uh, he departed and began to publish in Decapolis or the 10 cities how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. When Jesus was passed over again by ship to the other side, much people gathered to him as he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. <clears throat> I pray thee, I pray thee, come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. He prayed and he said it, she shall live. Jesus went with him. That was his faith speaking. And much people followed him and thronged him. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus, faith comes by hearing. She heard. <laughs> now she was a shut-in. She had an issue of blood. Now you go back to the book of Leviticus and, and, and you can find uh, where, uh, and you, you, can, you can find where by law she could not get a, more than, a, than normal for a woman to have. And she'd had this 12 years. So she's a shut-in. She could be stoned for being out in public. And there's the leader of the synagogue right there. She had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. She believed it before she felt it. <laughs> That's good, isn't it, Tim? Amen. Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power, dunamis, in the old English it's virtue, had gone out of him. He was aware of it. He, it, he knew the power went out of him. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach. The anointing, the power. So she acted on her faith. If I may but if touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Well, Brother Copeland, he knows all things. No, he's a man anointed. He knew the power went out of him. I'm thinking about a young woman. She came up on the platform. I can just see it in my mind. And... Uh, I laid hands on her and I knew it. I, I knew the power had gone out of me. When I, when I, when I laid hands on her. And I said, the, the power of God just went out of me. Now, what are you gonna do? She grabbed the curtain there on that stage and, and scooted down. And they went over to help her. I said, no, let her alone, let her alone. 
she began to take off braces. She had braced everything. I mean, she took it off and up around her neck and just peeled all that off and pulled herself up that curtain and took a couple of steps and every step, a step of faith, and she began to walk. She began to walk, she did good. And they had come, uh, people in uh, some places had come in a bus. She got out to the bus, she wouldn't get in the bus, she kept walking. <laughs> that, was a, that, that was a testimony later. And the next, I believe it was the next year at Southwest, there she was in spike high heels. Glory to God. And she was, and she, then she gave her testimony. And so Jesus was aware that that power went out of him. And he said, who touched me? Who touched my clothes? His disciples said unto him, <clears throat> so thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? He looked round about to see her that had done this thing. The woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, <clears throat> came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. That's how we know it was for 12 years. I mean, she told him. That's how we know that she, that she was a woman of means and, and but spent it all on many physicians and just got worse. And he said unto her, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of that plague. Or stay healed. You know how you got this. You know, be whole. So be whole. W-H-O-L-E. So that means now she's on her way to prosperity to, get to, to restore to her, what well, she spent on all those physicians. It's obvious that, th that she gave the physicians, but what did Jesus say? When you stand praying, forgive. So she had, somebody had been relaying to her, relaying to her what Jesus had said and what he preached, and so she was ready. And when she was ready, she said, well, this is it. Now look, she said it, she believed it, she did it, then she told it. She testified of it. She told him about it. That's, she said it, she believed it, she did it, and she told it. Brother Hagen was in, in, in staying in the home of, of, uh, uh, of, of, in a meeting where he was, and, and, and after the meeting, they came back to have some, uh, some uh, refreshments and so forth several people there at the table. And so he was talking about this. He, he, he said, folks, I have to pray and I have to pray now. So he just got down on his knees, turned the chair of the table around, got down on his knees. And when he did, there was Jesus. He saw him. He was right there. And... Uh, he said, and, and, and then Brother, Brother Hagin said, that the, the, with the woman with the issue of blood, I'm missing something here. He said, yes, you've missed it. He said, you got part of it right. But he said, there's four steps. He said, uh, go get something to write with. He said he was still in the spirit. He went in the bedroom and felt around in there and got his pad and pencil and came back out, walked back out there and got on his knees and there was Jesus. He said, write these four points. He said, write down, she said it, she believed it, she did it, and she told it. Now he said, anyone, anywhere at any time that will do those four things, they can receive anything from me that they need and anything that they want. You want? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There are things that you don't maybe particularly need all that badly, but, but it's something that you want. You, you, and, but it, on the border of a need. I, uh, 
I always liked motorcy- motorcycles, motorcycles when I was a boy, and airplanes, and and uh, so, but particularly airplanes. I, that was just in me, and I was so thrilled when I finally soloed the thing and got that instructor out of there. Just get out of here. <laughs> And that really thrilled me. And uh, I went ahead and pursued that. Little did I know at that time that the Lord was gonna call me to preach, that he called me to fly. It was aviation that put me in in that place as co-pilot on the Oral Roberts Evangelistic Association's airplane that put me in close relationship with Oral Roberts, but then when I got to Tulsa with Kenneth Hagin and his family, glory to God, we still support Richard Roberts. Praise God that those faith connections. But now, let's tank the, the, the want part. I've always liked to ride the Honda Goldwing and I saw an ad where there was one uh, over in Arkansas that already had the trike kit on it. And I thought about it, but I don't do anything without praying about it. And I prayed about it and I said, I said, Lord, I'm, you know, I know I don't need that thing. But uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a good thing that Gloria and I have done to enjoy our our, well, you know, we're best friends and, and we've ridden a lot. Anyway, to shorten this, went over there. Beautiful thing. I sat down on a large man by the name of Cody. He checked me out and everything. We got ready to leave and Cody came over there and he said, uh, my dad uh, wanted to come meet you. I told him we didn't need a crowd. Make this long story short. He came over, he was a Rama graduate, and I said, this young man full of the Holy Ghost, he said, Brother Copeland, my young son isn't. Well, we prayed for him right there in that Honda store, and when we went to the restaurant, I heard it in my spirit, you answered the prayers of a mother. That's what that motorcycle was all about, and I'm out of time. I'll be back in just a moment. Life situations can feel hopeless, but you as a believer in Christ Jesus have a life force that lives inside you. In the Miraculous Love Package, including the book by Kenneth Copeland, Walking in the Realm of the Miraculous, he describes how you can be surrounded by God's love and walk in the miraculous in your everyday life. Partnered with the Force of Forgiveness teaching on CD or digital download, Brother Copeland explains how forgiveness is the life force for you and your family. See how forgiveness is a force that relates exactly to healing, and to forgive others is an act of faith. There are things available to us in walking in the love of God that are not available in any other way. Learn how to apply this in your family life, on the job, and in everyday life. God's love in you changes situations. Request your free copy of the Miraculous Love Package. Walk in God's love and forgiveness and make living in the supernatural and the miraculous part of your everyday life. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. This offer is good for 60 days. If you're outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. I was not always in position to take advantage of something expensive like that. When Gloria and I started this, we didn't have anything. But we knew what we had learned from the Word of God. And a divine health and prosperity is possible when you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Let me read it to you. From the 10th chapter of the book of Romans. Righteousness, which is a faith, speaks on this wise. Say not in your heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. Who shall descend into the deep? The Amplified says into the abyss, or that's hell. 
That is to bring Christ again from the dead. What does it say? <clears throat> the word is nigh thee, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus or Jesus as Lord and shall believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Glory to God. Just pray this with me. Oh, Father in heaven, I believe it with all of my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I receive him. You said in your word that you gave your only begotten son and whoever believes on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I believe it. Jesus, come into my heart. Or like Gloria said, take my life and do something with it. I receive you and by faith I call you my Lord and my Savior. And now I know from your word, I am born again. Jesus said you must be born again or born from above by the Spirit. And now I receive, now that I'm saved, now that I'm a born again child of God, I believe I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit just like on the day of Pentecost. And I fully expect to speak with other tongues, a language I never have learned. I receive it now in Jesus' name. And just take a deep breath. Welcome God's family. You're a child of God. We want to give you this little book. He did it all for you. So request your copy at kcm.org and let us know. Tell us about it. We'll see you tomorrow. Until then, this is Kenneth Copeland reminding you again that God loves you and we love you and that Jesus is Lord. Yeah, he's your Lord now. Amen. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have a gift for you called the Salvation Package. Learn who you are in Jesus and what belongs to you as a child of God. Request your free package on kcm.org salvation.